welcome to epg patshala today i am going to talk to you about the history of education policy in india this is manjunath s working as a lecturer in the subject of sociology in the department of pre university education bangalore in this module <coughs> we are going to discuss about the historical analysis of how educational policies have taken place today we can see that there is a global attention on how educational policies are influencing on the socio economic development of <coughs> countries here but the problem is there is a lack of understanding between how social particularly these educational policies are formed and what constitutes an educational policy so an educational policy refers to <coughs> rules and principles which govern the system of education and also there are some crucial aspects which are dealing with the aspects of educational policies like curriculum development pedagogical <coughs> teaching methods and also about the rules and regulations <coughs> there is a author which is called his name is taylor who talks about three major aspects of education policy one is text second one is context and third one is about the consequences here we can see that in this module <coughs> the historical aspects of education policy which are divided into two aspects first deals with the pre independence spirit and the other one aspects deals with the post independence spirit education policy in pre independent india could further be classified into two time periods pre british and the british period while discussing education policy in pre british india an attempt has been made to analyze educational policies from the beginning of ancient period to the arrival of british since the beginning of indian civilization till contemporary times those in power have directed the course of education but it was only with the advent of modern times that a significant approach began to be adopted in formulating educational policies there are no available literary sources for getting an authentic understanding of educational policies in ancient india literary sources of 1000 ad and onwards give a reasonably adequate knowledge of the policies that governed the ancient education system in india the prominent sources are rigveda aranyakash upanishads and epics and puranas the aryans entered in 2nd bc these aryans were the first to make a significant attempt in formulating an education policy in india ancient thinkers regarded education as an instrument which puts an ignorant person on the path of intellectual progressive moral and virtuous course of life students in ancient india were required to study the subjects not only from the point of view of making themselves capable of handling life but were also required to study them basically from the point of view of engaging in research and work towards creating an advanced body of knowledge in the area after the vedic period there developed large kingdoms of powerful kings who wanted to develop an advanced course of life in their society they took keen interest in promoting the interests of higher education by giving rich donations and lands to the learned scholars and more importantly these kings enacted policies to redefine and reconstruct the education system in india the major universities in ancient india were nalanda and takshila there was a long struggle between buddhism and brahmanism during the period of 400 bce to 1000 ce to gain prominence in interpreting the world while buddhism was more people centric brahmanism tried to reinforce hierarchies 
quite significantly buddhist education was different and not based on vedic study and teachers were not brahmin the educational policies of buddhism were more radical and based on equality and opened up the doors of knowledge to all castes the most important buddhist centers of learning was at nalanda many foreign travelers like fahian huen song had not only visited the nalanda university but also stayed there in order to acquire real knowledge of buddhism at nalanda university students were given facilities such as free education boarding and lodging and etc during the mogal period the rulers did not make any significant efforts to universalize the existing educational system but tried to spread islamic education in india in the ancient period the major objective of religion was very important there were no significant efforts made to universalize education and include people from different groups in particular for many centuries education continued to be monopolized by a few groups uh, with caste and gender determining both access and utilization of educational opportunities under the british period the introduction of western education was an event of great historical significance for the emergence of an educational policy in india before the introduction of modern education opportunities for learning were generally confined to a very small portion of the population those from castes and classes placed lower down in the social hierarchy and hardly any access to education the pioneering work in the field of education under the british was done by missionaries they did make efforts to spread education but often it was motivated by the desire for the spread of christianity among the natives of india one important result of the great efforts the missionaries done is to stir up governments both in england and india to realize it was their duty to do something for the education of the people of the native 1698 the charter clearly stated it was the duty of english ministers of religion to give education along with their primary duty of spreading the gospel but the east india company had realized the political significance of a policy religious neutrality and therefore refrained from carrying out the directions of the charter however the company encouraged educational activity by establishing schools with liberal grants aid in 1781 sir warren hastings the first governor general of india established the kolkata madrasa for the cultivation of arabic and persian studies and he also founded the banaras sanskrit college the charter act of 1813 laid down the condition that the british government shall set apart a total amount of 1 lakh rupees for the education of indians this was the first time in india that a formal education policy was put in place for directing the course of education in the country indian reformers such as rajaram mohan roy and others felt the need for a new type of education and were of the view that introduction of english education in india would lead the country towards an age of renaissance in 1823 the committee of public instruction was set up to give a shape to the new educational policy of the government and initiate steps for its implementation in 1834 tb mekale came to india as the president of committee of public instruction he was a pro anglicist and supported the education of the classes he made a vigorous plea for spreading western education through the medium of english mekale in his minutes stated that the aim of promoting knowledge of the sciences could only be accomplished by the adoption of english 
as the medium of instruction. While renewing the charter in 1833, the British Parliament increased the total amount of money from 1 lakh to 1 million yearly for promoting the cause of education in India. Therefore, a committee was set up to offer suggestions for introduction of educational reforms in India under the chairmanship of Charles Wood. The document which the committee prepared is popularly known as Wood's Education Dispatch. It had far-reaching implications for the development of an educational system in the country. It is also described as Magna Carta of English Education in India. The most significant aspect of Wood's Dispatch was the decision to establish universities in India. The first modern university in India was established in Calcutta in 1857. Soon universities were also established in Bombay and Madras. While talking about educational policy in independent India, after the Sargent Commission, there were no major commissions or reporters in the British period. The Central Advisory Board of Education after the independence decided to set up two commissions, one to deal with the university education, the other to deal with the secondary education. It became imminent that education system in India would be restructured. Provision of free and compulsory education up to the age of 14 years was being debated in the constituent assembly and these debates ultimately found expression in the directive principles of state policy of the constitution of India. The goal set for the country's educational policy was to work out a system of universal elementary education by 1960. The government established education commissions in order to address these challenges and recommend comprehensive policies for educational problems and also for the development of educational system in India. After independence, India adopted the constitution in 1950. Education became the responsibility of both state and central governments. In independent India, education policies have been closely influenced by the education commissions that were set up from time to time. In the section that follows, which highlights the recommendations of these important commissions which have been presented. The first commission to be appointed in independent India was the University Education Commission of 1948 under the chairmanship of Dr. S. Radhakrishnan to report on the status of Indian university education and also to suggest improvements and extensions that would be desirable to suit the present and future requirements of the country. This commission had aimed at creating universities which would provide knowledge and wisdom for a comprehensive development of the personality. It considered university education as a pivotal step for higher level of learning. This report also proposed for the reconstruction of education system in tune with the vision of Indian constitution. The secondary education commission was set up under the chairmanship of Mudalir in 1952. This commission submitted its report to the government in 53. The report gave a broader view about the educational problems of Indians and proposed to increase efficiency of production. The report of the commission suggested diversification of high school courses and the establishment of multi-purpose high schools. Another proposal was that of introducing a uniform pattern throughout India. Further, it also recommended for the setting of technical schools. The recommendations of this commission occupy a very significant place in the development of secondary education in independent India. 
most of the educationists have praised its recommendations for providing very useful suggestions. After the Mudalir Commission, there was an appointment for the Indian Education Commission under the chairmanship of D.S. Kothari, popularly known as the Kothari Commission. It was entrusted with the task of dealing with all aspects and sectors of education and also to advise the government on the evolution of national system of education. So this educational policy has provided suggestions in 1968. In the commission's view, education had the power to work as a popular instrument of social, economic and political change. Therefore, educational objectives have to be related to long-term national aspirations. Further, the commission reviewed the development of education system in the modern period, particularly since independence, and came to the conclusion that Indian education needs a drastic reconstruction, almost a revolution, to realize the constitutional goals and to meet the various problems facing the country in different sectors. In 1968, the government of India had formulated the national policy of education in response to the recommendations of the Kothari Commission. The national policy on education saw total reformation and aimed at extending the prospects of education to all sectors of the society to accomplish the goal of harmony and integration. The policy suggested the provision of compulsory education to children in the 6 to 14 years age group as proposed in the Indian constitution. Further, it also recommended that regional languages must be encouraged for being used in secondary schools. The commission was of the opinion that English had to be the medium of instruction in schools and it considered Hindi as the national language. The draft national policy on education 1979 proposed the development of an educational system that helped people not only to enhance their knowledge but also the academic skills. It also called for building awareness of moral ethics among students so that they can develop a good personality and become worthy citizens. This draft policy on education suggested that a good educational system that reinforces the constitutional values must be implemented. The government of India initiated the national policy on education in 1986. Its major objective was to provide education to all sections of the society with a particular focus on scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, other backward classes and women who were deprived of educational opportunities for centuries. In order to fulfill these objectives, the national policy on education stressed on the provision of fellowships for the poor, imparting adult education, recruiting teachers from oppressed groups and also developing new schools and colleges. The government of India had set up a commission under the chairmanship of Acharya Ramamurthy in 1990 to reassess the impact of the provisions of national policy on education and also to give recommendations. The national policy on education emphasized the need for greater transformation of the Indian educational system with a focus on quality enhancement. This policy also stressed on developing moral values among students and bringing education closer to life. Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan or the Education for All movement is a central government program which aimed at universalizing elementary education in a time-bound manner. This program has been in operation since 2000-2001. Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan aimed at creating 
an ideal system of education which enabled individuals to develop and inculcate knowledge create awareness of social and human values and build a strong character this system proposed that education must develop in consensus with contemporary social needs right to education act or the right to children for free and compulsory education act emphasizes the importance of free and compulsory education for children who are in the age group of 6 to 14 years the act came into existence on 1st april 2010 and since then india became one of the 135 countries to make education as a fundamental right of every child further this act specifies that all private schools have to reserve 25% of seats to children of socially disadvantaged groups it also laid down that no child shall be held back expelled or required to pass a board examination until the completion of elementary education for school dropouts there is a special training given under this act since education is a concurrent issue in the indian constitution the responsibilities of implementation of this act have been distributed among the center state and local governmental bodies the central government bears 70% of expenses of the implementation of this act and 30% is provided by the state government so there are certain problems which faced only a few are mentioned here so first this scheme covers children in the classes of 1 to 8 only second this act is a general neutral and does not provide any special provisions for encouraging education of girls third it is also silent on the right to education for children with disability this act does not talk of post elementary stage after completing elementary education in elite schools children from vulnerable groups will not be able to pursue their education in such schools or colleges then they might have to slip back to schools of questionable standards which will have negative psychological impact on them finally it is evidently apparent that there are many incidents of corruption by school managements while implementing the act to conclude that educational policy has played an immensely important role in the development of an educational system in india since pre independence times in india the emphasis of educational policies has been changing from time to time according to the needs of socio economic needs of so the society in the 70 years of independent india there have been numerous educational commissions have taken place so these commissions have submitted their reports so <coughs> they have had significant impact on the growth of educational so <coughs> in india but still there have been gaps between the recommendations and the implementation partly educational policies have failed to address the social and economic inequalities it is a challenge for future educational policies to address these issues thank you